In this video, we are going to look at the nature of stationary points on graphs. Um, so here is a beautiful looking graph, and we have our stationary points, this is where the gradient equals zero. So there's one at the top here, so where this graph has a positive gradient on this side, a negative gradient on that side, and in the middle a gradient of zero and we say that this is the local maximum can't spell maximum maxi m u m okay the reason it's got a local there is because actually the graph continues much higher over here but it just happens in this small locality that's the maximum point and it's local maximum also the turning point of the graph, because it turns from positive into negative. If a point here, the gradient is also zero, but there's no turn in the graph, it's just carrying on negative here and negative there again. And we call this the point of inflection. So that is the point of inflection. And finally, as you can see, there's a point down here where the gradient is also zero, going from negative into a positive gradient again. And as you probably guess, this is indeed the local maximum. Turning points. What we need to do today is look at how to decide um, whether the point we have is a maximum, an inflection, or a minimum. Now, we've seen before uh, that a normal function tells us about a single point on the graph. Just any random point, it will tell you the coordinates of that point. You've also seen the first derivative. That is describing how the points are changing around this point, in which case it's called a gradient. Is it increasing? Is it decreasing? Is it going flat? What's going on? Or in fact, is it just at a zero point? So what we're going to look at now is look at our second derivative, which is how the gradient changes. So what's happening to the gradient? Is the gradient getting steeper and steeper and steeper? Is it getting shallower? Is it turning positive? Is it turning negative? What's happening to the gradient on the graph? So if you look at this graph here, you can see here the gradient is negative, becomes zero, and then turns positive. So here, our gradient is turning positive. At the maximum point, our gradient was positive and it's turning negative and a point of inflection is just staying the same that's going to be really important later on uh, some notation for you so obviously this is our first derivative here so we call the first derivative and you also know that written like this dy by dx our second derivative which talks about how the gradient is changing is d squared y over dx squared it means exactly the same thing just some different notation for you let's look how we, let's look how we're going to use this in a setting so we've been asked here to find the stationary points and their nature. And the nature means, is it a maximum, is it a minimum, or is it an inflection? Well, obviously to find a stationary point, we need the gradient to be zero. So what we're gonna do is find the first derivative of this equation, minus 12x squared. Uh, let's just factorize this. So when this equals zero, is going to have be a stationary point. So you can factor it to get, take out 12x squared 
uh, x subtract 1. So our two stationary points are here when x must be 0, because 0 times anything is 0, or here when x is 1. So there are two stationary points. Um, so the actual, let's find out the coordinates for these two points. So remember, our first function talks about a single point. It gives us the coordinates. So we take our first function and we substitute in 0 first of all. We get 3 times 0 to the power of 4. Subtract 4 times 0 cubed. Take away 3, which gives us nothing, nothing, negative 3. So our first stationary point is at x value of 0, y value negative 3. Our second stationary point is an x is 1. So we substitute 1 into this equation. So it's 3 times 1 to the power of 4. Take 4 times 1 cubed. Subtract 3 which is 3, take 4, take 3, which is negative 4. So our second stationary point, where x is 1 and y is negative 4. So on the graph, we would have 0, negative 3 and 1, negative 4. What we don't know is whether our graph is going to go and do this, maybe or whether it's going to do something like this or other ideas. So we don't know yet what's happening around these points. Are there maximums, minimums, points of inflection? This is where our second derivative is especially useful. So we're going to take our original first derivative, which was 12x cubed minus 12x squared and you differentiate that again. So, so far there's no actual new skills you're using. The same skills or differentiation minus 24x. Let's take these two points in turn. Let's take the first point here. 0 minus 3. So to check what type of turning point this is, is it a minimum, a maximum, or an inflection? We're going to substitute in the x value into this equation. So you're going to substitute in x value of 0, so 36 times 0 squared, take 24 times 0 is 0. This is telling us that around this point, the gradient isn't turning to something else. If it was positive, it's still positive. If it was negative, it's still negative. So we're looking at a point of inflection. So either like that or like that. Okay, let's look at our other point. So when x is 1. So we substitute 1 into our second derivative. So 36 times 1 squared, take 24 times 1, which is 36, take 24, which is 12. Now the common mistake here is you go, oh, it's positive, it must be a maximum. It's not. Okay, this is a minimum point. Because this is positive, It tells us that our graph turns positive around this point. And for graph to turn positive, it must come down first, then turn positive. So in fact, it is a minimum value. Okay, it's turning positive. So we can now sketch our little graph. We'll have coordinates of 0 minus 3 and 1 minus 4. We know 
0 minus 3 is a point of inflection. It's going straight. And then we are turning as a minimum at this point here. So to come down and up. Given this is a point of inflection, it's going to be the same either positive or negative gradient either side. It's sloping downwards, so we're sloping this way as well. So our graph looks just like that.